Good morning, church. Greetings to you in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. We welcome you this fourth Sunday in Advent as we celebrate uh, the coming Christ with lessons and carols. And I hope that while we're together today that you once again hear that story as if you've heard it for the first time today. Uh, A few things to mention to you this morning. Uh, Charge conferences tomorrow evening by Zoom. Uh, and the church council, I sh- I've already sent you the Zoom link, and I'll send you a reminder tomorrow uh, with the Zoom link again. Also, Christmas Eve service will be uh, at 7 o'clock, and we'll have a candlelight service along with uh, Holy Communion. There will be worship here on Christmas Day and New Year's Day at the regular time at 1040. Um, but I do want to let you know that the offices are closed Beginning, um, beginning one to Wednesday, <laughs> Wednesday, and then we'll, we'll reopen on January uh, the third. Uh, again, it's good to see. Oh, and I also need to mention to you that the hymns won't be on the monitors this morning, so you might want to grab you a hymnal uh, so you can participate with the congregational uh, singing this morning. Um, we're a little short-handed, uh, but we've got. Uh, to a couple of amazing technicians on the job. We'll be fine. We'll be fine. Again, I'm glad you're here today. I truly am. I'm proud of your faith for, for braving the weather this morning. <laughs> uh, as, we, as we are together today, may we sense and know the presence of Jesus Christ in very real ways. Let the worship begin. And of the Lord your God. There I am. Let it be deep as Sheol or high as heaven. But when the king refused, God would not be stopped. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. 
Look, the young woman is with child and shall bear a son and shall name him Emmanuel. God wants us to know even when we aren't sure ourselves. God wants us to experience God's presence even when we think we can handle life on our own. God sends us signs of God's presence with us. All we need to do is keep our eyes open and look. Look, the virgins shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had born a son, and he named him Jesus. We light these candles, the candle of joyous hope, of proclaimed peace, of deep, everlasting joy, and today of presence that speaks of love as a sign that no matter our circumstance, we know we are not alone. number 218 it came upon the midnight clear Thank you, and please be seated, and I invite the kids to come and join me here for Wiggle Time.
different stool today. Either that or I'm getting really short. Somebody swapped stools on me. <laughs> well, good morning. How's everybody doing? You doing okay? Hi, boy. Hey, Evie, how are you? No, I can tell. That's right. Everybody looks a little bit like Christmas today. That's right. How are you? Good morning. Man, you guys were great last week. Oh, my goodness. You guys really made the Christmas story come alive last week. You all were wonderful. I was so proud of you and so happy. I've been happy all week because of that. <laughs> well, I want to tell you a story this morning about a little boy named John. You know what John wanted for Christmas? A wagon. A red wagon that he could pull around and carry stuff in, help his dad, help his mom, or just take that wagon around town and walk around on the streets and on the, on the sidewalk with his wagon. Well, he got one for Christmas. That was a big, long, red Wagon with black wheels and white hubcaps and a black handle. He was so happy. He was so happy he wanted that wagon so bad. So, meanwhile, at the pastor's house on Christmas morning, his phone started ringing off the hook. This lady from the flower committee called and said, Pastor, Merry Christmas, but I've got some bad news. Bad news, he said. Yes, bad news. Somebody stole the baby out of the cradle of the nativity scene out in front of the church. He said, what? Somebody stole the baby Jesus? Yes, he's gone. We've got Mary there. We've got Joseph there. We've got the manger there. But somebody stole the baby Jesus. Right out from in front of the church in the lawn. Well, the phone calls just kept coming, and the pastor said, well, listen, I'm just going to go down to the church. So as he was walking down the sidewalk to the church, here came John. Came John with his wagon, his brand-new red wagon with the white hubcaps and the black tires. And guess what he was hauling in his wagon? Baby Jesus. Can you believe it? He had baby Jesus in his wagon. And the pastor said, Merry Christmas, John. What's that in your wagon? And John, big smile on his face, says, It's baby Jesus. <coughs> and he said, Why do you have baby Jesus in your wagon? And he said, I was so happy when I got this wagon for Christmas the first thing I wanted to do was to give baby Jesus a ride in my brand new red wagon. <laughs> wow. Yeah, Jesus coming to us in the form of a baby makes us happy. We're getting excited. Yeah? You guys showed us last week what it looked like when Jesus was born. And we're still waiting. But guess what? This time next week is Christmas, and then we'll be able to really celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. God sent us a wonderful gift, the gift of baby Jesus, better than a red wagon with white hubcaps and a black tire. God sent us Jesus to be our very own. We don't have to steal him from the manger scene out in front of the church. We can carry Jesus with us all the time, all the time. Let's have a prayer. Lord, I thank you for these little ones with me today. They are so special to me. They're my, some of my very best friends, and I'm so thankful that you let your light shine through each one of them. Help us all, O oh Lord, to let your light shine and whatever we can as we get ready to celebrate the birth of Jesus. All right, guys. You can go play now. That's right. You can enjoy Miss Martha. You can enjoy Miss Martha. Yes. Yes. 
Hold on to each other. You got it? <laughs> oh, I did it. I did it. Would you turn in your hymnals to page number 250? The choir will sing verse 1 of Once in Royal David City. And then the choir and the congregation will sing verses 2 and 4. Beloved in Christ, as we await the great festival of Christmas, let us prepare ourselves so that we may be shown its true meaning. Let us hear in lessons from Holy Scripture how the prophets of Israel foretold that God would visit and redeem the waiting people. Let us rejoice in our carols and hymns that the good purpose of God is being mightily fulfilled. Let us celebrate the promise that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ will bring all peoples and all things into the glory of God's eternal kingdom. The blind receive their sight, and the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up and the poor have the gospel preached to them. But first, let us pray for the world that God so loves. For those who have not heard the good news of God or who do not believe it. For those who walk in darkness in the shadow of death, and for the church in this place and everywhere, that it may be freed from all evil and fear, and may in pure joy lift up the light of the love of God. These prayers and praises we humbly offer to God. Oh, oh, oh. 
Would you join me as we pray together the prayer our Lord taught us? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The first lesson. During that day's cool evening breeze, they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the Lord God in the middle of the garden's trees. The Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? The man replied, I heard your sound in the garden. I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. He said, Who told you that you were naked? Did you eat from the tree? which I commanded you not to eat. And the man said, The woman you gave me, she gave me some fruit from the tree, and I ate. The Lord God said to the woman, What have you done? And the woman said, The snake tricked me, and I ate. And the Lord God said to the snake, Because you did this, you are the one cursed out of all the farm animals, out of all the wild beasts. On your belly you will crawl, and dust you will eat every day of your life. I will put contempt between you and the woman, between your offspring and hers. They will strike your head, and you will strike at their heels. To the man he said, because you listened to your wife's voice and you ate from the tree that I commanded, do not eat from. Cursed is the fertile land because of you. In pain you will eat from it every day of your life. Weeds and thistles will grow for you, even as you eat the field's plants. By the sweat of your face you will eat bread until you return to the fertile land, since from it you were taken you, were, you are soil, to the soil you will return. Oh. 
The second lesson. The Lord's messenger called out to Abraham from heaven a second time and said, I give you my word as the Lord that because you did this and didn't hold back your son, your only son, I will bless you richly. And I will give you countless descendants, as many as the stars in the sky and as the grains of sand on the seashore. They will conquer their enemies' cities. All the nations of the earth will be blessed because of your descendants, because you obeyed me.
The third lesson. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in a pitch dark land, light has dawned. A child is born to us. A son is given to us. And authority will be on his shoulders. He will be named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. There will be vast authority and endless peace for David's throne and for his kingdom, establishing and sustaining it with justice and righteousness now and forever. The zeal of the Lord of heavenly forces will do this. The fourth lesson, a shoot will grow up from the stump of Jesse, a branch will sprout from his roots, the Lord's spirit will rest upon him, a spirit of wisdom and understanding, a spirit of planning and strength, a spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord. He will delight in fearing the Lord. He won't judge by appearances, nor decide by hearsay. He will judge the needy with righteousness and decide with equity for those who suffer in the land. He will strike the violent with the rod of his mouth. By his breath of his lips, he will kill the wicked. The wolf will live with the lamb and the leopard will lie down with the young goat. The calf and the young lion will feed together, and a little child will lead them. The cow and the bear will graze. Their young will lie down together, and a lion will eat straw like an ox. A nursing child will play over the snake's hole. Toddlers will reach right over the serpent's den. They won't harm or destroy anywhere on my holy mountain. The earth will surely be filled with the knowledge of the Lord, just as the water covers the sea.
A fifth lesson. When Elizabeth was six months pregnant, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a city in Galilee, to a virgin who was engaged to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David's house. The virgin's name was Mary. When the angel came to her, he said, Rejoice, favored one, the Lord is with you. She was confused by these words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. The angel said, don't be afraid, Mary. God is honoring you. Look, you will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of David, his father. He will rule over Jacob's house forever, and there will be no end to his kingdom. And Mary said to the angel, How will this happen since I haven't had relations with a man? The angel replied, The Holy Spirit will come over you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the one who is to be born will be holy. He will be called God's Son. Then Mary said, I am the Lord's servant. Let it be with me just as you have said. Then the angel left her.
the sixth lesson. In those days, Caesar Augustus declared that everyone throughout the empire should be enrolled in the tax lists. This first enrollment occurred when Quirinius was governor of Syria. Everyone went to their own cities to be enrolled. Since Joseph belonged to David's house and David's line, he went up from the city of Nazareth in Galilee to David's city called Bethlehem in Judea. He went to be enrolled together with Mary, who was promised to him in marriage and who was pregnant. While they were there, the time came for Mary to have her baby. She gave birth to her firstborn child, a son, wrapped him snugly, and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. The seventh lesson, nearby shepherds were living in the fields, guarding their sheep at night. The Lord's angels stood before them. The Lord's glory shone around them, and they were terrified. The angel said, don't be afraid. Look, I bring good news to you. Wonderful, joyous news for all people. Your Savior is born today in David's city. He is Christ the Lord. 
This is a sign for you. You will find a newborn baby wrapped snugly and lying in a manger. And suddenly a great assembly of the heavenly forces was with the angels praising God. They said, glory to God in heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, Let's go right now to Bethlehem and see what's happened. Let's confirm what the Lord has revealed to us. They went quickly and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. You turn in your hymnals to page number 236 and we'll sing, While Shepherds Watch Their Flocks, we'll sing verses 1 through 4 and then verse 6. The eighth lesson. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in the territory of Judea, during the rule of King Herod, Magi came from the east to Jerusalem. They asked, where is the newborn king of the Jews? We've seen his star in the east and we've come to honor him. When King Herod heard this, he was troubled. And everyone in Jerusalem was troubled with him. He gathered all the chief priests and all the legal experts and asked them where the Christ was to be born. And they said, in Bethlehem of Judea, for this is what the prophet wrote. You, Bethlehem, land of Judah, by no means are you least among the rulers of Judah because, you, because from you will come one who governs who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the Magi and found out from them the time when the star had first appeared. 
He sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search carefully for the child. When you found him, report to me, so that I too may go and honor him. When they heard the king, they went. And look, the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stood over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child with Mary, his mother. And falling on their knees, they honored him. They, then they opened their treasure chests and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. The ninth lesson. And the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word was with God in the beginning. Everything came into being through the Word, and without the Word, nothing came into being. What came into being through the word was life. And the life was a light for all people. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness doesn't extinguish it. A man named John was sent from God. He came as a witness to testify concerning the light so that through him everyone would believe in the light. He himself wasn't the light, but his mission was to testify concerning the light. The true light that shines on all people was coming into the world. 
The light was in the world, and the world became, and the world came into being through the light, but the world didn't recognize the light. The light came to his own people, and his own people didn't welcome him. But those who did welcome him, those who believed in his name, he authorized to become God's children, born not from blood, nor from human desire or passion, but born from God. The word became flesh and made his home among us. We have seen his glory, glory like that of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. You join, remain seated as we sing, O Come All Ye Faithful, verses 1, 2, 3, and 6. It's number 234 in the hymnal. O Come All Ye Faithful. Before we have the closing prayer and the closing hymn, uh, Barb has some news to share. Yesterday at 
the cookies, crafts, and more sale. We have lots of support. We do have some items left. If you would like some cookies or some other food items, they'll be back in Linger Hall. We also have some crafts and decorations, possible gift mm -hmm. items downstairs, and Lynn Petrosky will be down there. And Linda also has some. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the congregation and the Pastor Parish Relations Committee would like to give you Christmas. You and Martha, Christmas oh. gift. I don't think she's she, She's there, a right? children's church. But we do appreciate you and Amen. hope you have a blessed Christmas this year. And we love you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Would you stand for the closing prayer, please? Go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor everyone. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 240 as we sing together, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. <laughs>